This video discusses how to set loop properties and how to jump between loops. Let's start with how to set loop properties first. Since a video or open file can have many loops, in order to set or change the properties of a specific loop, you must first select the loop. And you do that by simply placing the blue progress indicator in one of the looping areas. Once it's within that area, you've selected the loop. Once a loop has been selected, any changes made by using either the tempo or pitch buttons will be applied to the selected loop and only the selected loop. However, beyond these two specific changes, meaning these two here, you can further customize the loop by clicking the edit button when a loop is selected. So we have selected this loop. If we go over to the loop controls area and click the edit button, you'll see this loop edit window open up. Let's review each of the things in this edit dialog box. The first is the label and you can overwrite the existing text in here and you can customize it to say whatever you'd like it to say. The next area below the label are the starting and ending positions of the loop, meaning the green and the red starting and ending points. And you can simply adjust those either in one thousandths of a second in seconds or in minutes and you can do that by simply selecting and clicking these buttons right here. Below that are the audio parameters. Again this refers to pitch and tempo. These same two buttons that are found over here on the user interface. But within this edit dialog box you can also adjust those settings. And then lastly we need to talk about playback parameters. And there are two things here. Let's start with loop count. By default, Video Surgeon uses the value of 999. And this is our way of saying that this particular loop is going to loop indefinitely or infinitely. But the point here is that as opposed to having something play infinitely, which in many cases is the preferred setting, you may want to overwrite this and put in a value like 5. And if you do that, what that means then is that this looping area will play 5 times. So it will play repeatedly five times and then at the end of the fifth time it will continue playing beyond this ending loop point. And so obviously if you set this to one or five or ten or whatever you set it to, that's the number of times this is going to loop before it stops looping and continues playing the rest of the video. The loop delay is in seconds and essentially what it does is that if you designate something like 10 seconds, what that means is that when this loop is playing, when it hits the end of the loop, it will pause or delay for a period of X number of seconds, in this case 10. And the reason for doing that is because if you're playing along, you may want to give yourself a chance to regroup your hands or if you're trying to sort of digest or understand something you've seen in a video, this gives you a chance to sort of momentarily pause and think about it and absorb it prior to it beginning to play again. And again, you can set this up to 60 seconds. So this is another way in which you can customize a loop setting within Video Surgeon. One of the nice features of Video Surgeon is that each loop could be customized separately. So if you go to a second loop, you can open this edit dialog window and you can customize this one to be completely different than this other one that we've just been working on. And of course, if you have multiple loops, be it 1, 2, 5, 10, or 20, each loop can be customized separately. The other brief topic to review is how to jump between looping areas. Let me set one more of these up for us. And then let's talk about how we jump between these. And the way you do that is that you use the loop jump to buttons which are found over here. If we want to go forward, we simply click and we jump to the beginning of the next loop point. We click again, we jump to the beginning of the next loop point, and if we want to jump backwards, we click the backwards button, and again it jumps to the next beginning loop point. You can use these jump to buttons for the loop either when the video is paused, as we have been demonstrating to you, or when it's playing. However, when it's playing, there's one small change that you need to understand. Let's go ahead and start it playing. And now, as you can see, if we use the jump to button, we can easily jump forward to the next loop and then to the next loop. Not a problem. However, if we click the back button, it jumps back. We click it again, it jumps back. So if we wanted to jump backwards out of this loop to the previous loop, we actually need to double click this jump back to button. So let's go ahead and do that. So double click it or click it twice very quickly. 
double click it again. So that's the only difference between using these jump to buttons when the video is static versus when the video is playing. And with that, we will conclude this video tutorial.